Hello and uh, a very warm welcome to uh, part four where I'll be uh, painting the uh, loudspeaker as well as replacing the uh, old speaker cloth on the uh, battle board. Before I begin to execute an alignment the wavy dial will uh, require attention and once all of that is uh, complete I will shine up the cabinet or case. When I see my reflection I'll then reinstall the baffle board and speaker along with the chassis into the cabinet or case, put the three knobs and test the radio with its back cover in place. There's a fair bit to be done so I'll get started. I'll begin this phase by tidying up this loudspeaker baffle board. It is in uh, reasonably good condition but uh, the uh, speaker cloth has definitely seen better days. Since the original cloth has long since been uh, out of uh, production I will uh, replace it with uh, this speaker cloth. Past experience has shown that this shade of green goes quite well with shiny dark brown uh, Bakelite. I shall uh, do all of that once I've applied two coats of uh, black auto spray paint to uh, the rear of this uh, baffle board. Having uh, removed the old speaker cloth from uh, this baffle board I'm convinced that uh, scratching the old adhesive off its uh, surface before spray painting uh, its rear will uh, enable me to uh, achieve a better finish. Whilst I'm waiting for the first coat of uh, black spray paint to dry onto the rear of the baffle board, I'll uh, straighten out this uh, wavy radio dial. It too has seen better days. Believe it or not, I've uh, given this dial a wash, but uh, I've only gone as far as I dare for fear of erasing the uh, print. I'm going to uh, use Wifey's clothes iron for the purpose of uh, straightening out this uh, dial. Place wavy dial between uh, several sheets of uh, newspaper. And uh, gently apply heat. Always start at a low heat setting. This is going to take a little bit of a time, so uh, probably we'll get back to you.
can apply, apply a little bit of pressure but not too much. Yes, it's uh, starting to uh, straighten out. You notice I'm increasing the heat as I'm uh, going along. We are getting there. Well, we're not far. How about that? I think I'll uh, stop at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not too bad. I can live with that dial being like that. It is better than what it uh, was. Yeah. That's okay. One straight radio dial. <laughs> Straightening out what was a very wavy dial didn't take as long as I'd uh, begun to envisage. Nonetheless, though its plastic is uh, yellowing in a few places, I'm uh, happy to live with that for the present. Since I removed the bolts for securing the loudspeaker onto uh, this baffle board so I could easily scrape off the old glue that held the speaker cloth I now have to um, put them back. <laughs> to enable them to become captive once again I will make up some metal loaded epoxy adhesive with uh, a tincture of uh, bicarbonate of soda. It is out of date but it is good enough for this job to uh, create a little extra strength and hardness to the uh, mix.
I always make more than I require. By doing that I have plenty to go at. <laughs> I think that's uh, suitably mixed. Just realised I've made a small error. Should have put the uh, bolt in first. That's still, it's done now. <laughs> it's going to do it again just then. Don't push the bolt all the way in, just uh, part way in. And then apply the uh, adhesive. Add a little extra over the bolt head. There we go. Rotate the uh, bolt a little so as to uh, seat it into uh, its orifice. I'll clean the tough later. And there we have it. When that adhesive has, has set, all we've got to do is just smooth it over so as to avoid a depression in the replacement speaker cloth when it is uh, stuck to this part of the uh, baffle board. Right, there we go. Whilst the epoxy adhesive is setting over each one of the four bolt heads I will uh, leave it at least 24 hours to uh, completely cure. My uh, next task is to sort out this uh, loudspeaker. I'll begin by uh, de-rusting, masking over and uh, spray painting uh, this basket. Once that is complete, I'll move over to uh, patching up as I repair the uh, paper cone. Hopefully by then 
the uh, refurbished loudspeaker will be ready to be refitted onto the uh, baffle board. But not before I've fitted the replacement speaker cloth. This is after it's received its first coat of uh, auto spray paint primer. Since I've uh, applied its second coat to this uh, loudspeaker basket, it is beginning to look fairly respectable. Its only issue is its damaged cone, which I'll uh, repair with this uh, tissue paper. I'm of the opinion that uh, if you was to ask 10 vintage radio men how best to repair a damaged loudspeaker cone, there would be a strong possibility you would get 10 different methods. And there would equally be a strong possibility each method would work adequately. I usually use PVA glue for this type of repair work, but contact, contact adhesive <laughs> will work equally as good. Many years ago I worked alongside a fellow service tech who would not use anything other than uh, contact adhesive and what he referred as closet paper. <laughs> a closet here in my part of England is the bathroom or toilet. <laughs> Since I'm out of PVA glue, I'll apply my old work colleague's method of repairing this damaged speaker cone. I know it works well since I've applied this method countless times in past years. So uh, here goes. I thought I'd gotten everything together to repair this speaker cone on camera and knowingly I had forgotten one vital item. The contact adhesive. How on earth I was hoping to repair a damaged speaker cone without adhesive would have been a miracle. I had everything else to hand though. So I switched off my camera to save battery time whilst I went downstairs to get the required glue. I returned to my bench, thought I'd switch my camera back on and proceeded to repair the damaged speaker cone. What I didn't know was I hadn't switched my camera back on. Consequently, footage of me repairing the cone was not recorded. Yes, I know it was lackadaisical on me but the cone is now repaired and uh, good to go. I've patched the tear on uh, both sides. It might seem I'm being a bit belt and braces, but I'm a belt and braces type of chap. Whenever I do a job I like to think it's going to last a long time. Now I'll uh, turn my attention towards the speaker cloth. The four speaker fixing bolts are captive once again and I've uh, abrasive papered the epoxy flush with the uh, surface of the uh, wood. My next task is to cut a piece of uh, speaker cloth ready for uh, gluing onto the surface of uh, this baffle board. I'll do that off camera. There we go. Always cut off more than uh, the actual size of the baffle board. It allows for uh, adjustment. Don't go mad with applying the adhesive. If it soaks through the speaker cloth, it is a devil to remove. And here it is chaps, speaker cloth glued to the uh, baffle board and it's nice and taut. 
Note, none of the contact adhesive has soaked through the cloth. Personally, I uh, tend towards undergluing rather than overgluing. Once this baffle board is uh, bolted back inside the cabinet, it will not go anywhere. And here it is, one six and three eighths inch reconditioned uh, speaker bolted onto an equally reconditioned uh, baffle board. Now, personally, I'd say um, PVA wood glue makes for producing a better looking job. Note, I've uh, continued the um, replacement speaker cloth round the edge of the uh, perimeter of the uh, baffle board. My reason for doing that, this new uh, speaker cloth easily frays. One reason why I use a hot soldering iron to make four holes in the uh, speaker cloth. The cloth easily melts, therefore preventing fraying round uh, each of the holes. Right, it is now time I turned my attention onto the cabinet or case if you prefer. Before going over to the cabinet or case I'll show you what I use for filling in a badly scoped section of uh, this back cover. This area was uh, so badly scorched a hole had burned through the uh, fabric. Had the hole been larger than it was very likely I'd have uh, cut a square hole and uh, filled it with a piece of hardboard of the same or similar thickness and painted it with uh, a colour as close to that of this uh, back cover. Now, normally when I fill in uh, small holes in back covers I use car body filler. Some fillers are uh, not all that good in uh, close proximity to heat, like uh, dropper resistors. Instead of using uh, car body filler for uh, this purpose, I decided to give uh, metal loaded epoxy adhesive a chance. Since I was making up a batch with a tincture of bicarbonate of soda for repairing the uh, uh, crack in the top of the cabinet, I made a little bit extra and applied it to uh, the burnt area of uh, this back cover. As to whether it will withstand heat, only uh, time will tell. I have an idea a few of you might be thinking, goodness gracious old boy, what on earth have you done to that cabinet? I've washed it. Now, off camera, I will give it a good polishing. I begin the polishing process when shining Bakelite by applying raw linseed oil. Though uh, any one of the wood treatment oils will work just as good and uh, I use nothing less than uh, 1200 
Brit abrasive paper. Here I'm using uh, P320, whatever that is. But it's a very fine uh, paper. I apply just enough rolling seed oil onto the uh, surface and uh, apply that to the surface of the Bakelite and just rub lightly, not too much pressure. When you feel a reduction in resistance move to another area on the Bakelite surface. It is not advisable to rub in one area for too long, which in this instance was less than two minutes. Once the cabinet or case has been uh, rubbed all over, clean off with a clean or a fairly clean rag. You will notice a very very dull surface but nonetheless it will be smooth. Okay chaps, I'll uh, continue uh, doing this. It's not one of the more interesting aspects of uh, vintage radio refurbishment. <laughs> Having done that, the cabinet or case will have a very dull lustre at this stage, but at the touch it will feel to have a smooth waxy surface. Now the next stage in this operation is optional. Personally I prefer to uh, apply steam remover which is as fine as talcum powder on, onto a rag and uh, Apply it to the surface and rub. You'll see the stain coming off onto the rag. You uh, tend to get a feel when the Bakelite begins to develop a less dull lustre. I usually apply steer remover two or three times but do not spend too much time on this as it is quite possible to uh, adversely affect the surface of the uh, Bakelite. As you can see a lustre is starting to appear albeit uh, still very dull. Next I will apply uh, good old Brasso. You will definitely begin to see a definite lustre appear after I've done that. As you can see a definite lustre is beginning to shine through. I'm getting there so I'll continue with the Brasso for a wee bit longer. Now a lustre is definitely coming through. Excuse my poor marks. <laughs> I'm uh, not aiming towards a new look. I'll be satisfied having achieved a decent shine. My final application will be to polish the Bakelite surface with the um, brush. I don't know what happened to the end of that uh, last clip but um, I meant to say Brywax Polish. All the preparation work involving the um, linseed oil and the fine grit abrasive paper and the uh, fine pumice like powder enabled a foundation upon which the Brywax Polish enabled me to achieve a luster that I can say I'm content with. As soon as I had gotten to where I could see my reflection as well as 
see the uh, simulated uh, walnut effect. It's a shame about that crack on top, but I'm prepared to live with that. I knew that uh, it was time for me to start polishing. Quite likely this cabinet or case would not have been a whole lot more shiny when uh, this radio was new during the uh, first half of the uh, 1940s. My next task will be to refit this uh, station dial. And uh, when I've done that, I'll go on to fit the baffle board onto which the uh, loudspeaker is fitted. By then, uh, you will see this Echo model AD75 starting to look like a radio once again. Now the speaker, dial, cursor and uh, three knobs have been fitted. This radio is most certainly looking like an Echo Model AD 75. I'd say it is not unreasonable to assume this radio had not performed in uh, several decades. Now it has been snatched from what might have been an uncertain future. It is now functional. Delivering the goods, shipping footballs, fruit trees. Is to work at, and I think you're becoming more and more comfortable with that. This is the medium wave band. Thank you very much for joining us on BBC Local Radio. Oh, it was great talking to you. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. So, looking like a documentary, it kind of took off. Now on to long wave. Social distancing to continue to slow the spread of the virus. But where does the rule that people should stay two meters apart come from? These recommendations are based really on. There is one task left to be done. That is the alignment procedure. Anybody who knows where BBC Radio 4 is on the long wave band will see that that cursor is miles out. I thoroughly dislike radios that do not have provision for uh, executing an oscillator dial tracking alignment with the dial fixed inside the radio and uh, the chassis that is adjusted outside the cabinet. This radio is a case in point, but I'll slowly work my way through that part of the alignment. I'll uh, get my signal generator and VVM ready and warmed up before I uh, get started. OK chaps, it has now come to that time when I do an IF alignment as well as an oscillator, tuning dial, tracking alignment also. I did say that uh, long wave tracking was way off alignment and uh, it still is. Yet surprisingly, medium wave was as close as damn it. Why the discrepancy between the two bands is uh, anyone's guess. I'll not consult the circuit diagram since AF alignment is uh, straightforward enough. You start the furthest away from the uh, frequency changer or front end, then progress back towards the front end or frequency changer. The intermediate frequency for this particular model of radio is 480 kilohertz 
I've uh, had my uh, VVM uh, to show you my uh, VVM plugged in for uh, almost an hour as well as uh, my uh, signal generator and uh, my uh, frequency counter also the uh, radio itself has been plugged in to the power for uh, well over four hours I do not like the way I've uh, blue tacked the uh, dial onto the uh, chassis it's far too haphazard for my blood I'll feel very fortunate if I get the dial tracking especially for uh, my favourite station which is BBC Radio 4 on the long wave within four millimetres either side of where its position should be on the dial which is uh, 198 or uh, 1500 kilohertz we can uh, only hope I know my setup here looks very much Heath Robinson the long and short of this is I'm a thoroughly disorganized person my wife would eagerly verify that particular point unfortunately the video editing I use doesn't have picture in picture facility so I'll set my camera onto the uh, VVM whilst I begin by adjusting IFT2 trimmer capacitors and then move over to IFT1 trimmer capacitors which of course is the front end right I'll begin now too bad that one was a little bit off but uh, yeah we peaked it up to the uh, IFT2 again and just repeat the operation I'm not going to labour the point yeah that's okay is good enough for the uh, uh, IF alignment now on to the uh, tracking the oscillator tracking side of it I'll back in a minute when I've got set up I might be giving an impression I love uh, crocodile uh, leads the best of setups but uh, it works or certainly works adequate for uh, the average quality of AM receivers like uh, this one I'll quickly uh, change this lot over for uh, long wave dial tracking
Alright. I shall do this uh, by ear. I'm just chasing it along the dial. Right, that is on uh, 1500 metres, which is uh, 198 metres, that's where I want, that's where Radio 4 should be. If that is within 4 millimetres, either side of where the uh, dial cursor is now, I'll regard myself as uh, very fortunate, I've done a good job. <laughs> We will see. <laughs> I'll just put this lot uh, back together and we will assess where we're at. Okay then, catch you in a moment. Before I return the dial and chassis to uh, this cabinet or case, there is a wee mistake I made earlier on in this uh, series. That is the possession of the mains lead rubber boot. It is in the centre of the, this board. Looking at the back cover, it needs to be either above centre or below centre. That is to uh, avoid making an unsightly hole into the centre to uh, accommodate it. Here is uh, a replacement board I made earlier uh, today. I'll get back once I've fitted that board, as well as refitting the dial and uh, chassis, back into uh, this cabinet. This radio is now very sensitive. It is picking up BBC Radio 4 on the long wave without an aerial. It did not do that before I gave this radio a realignment. Internally, the chassis looks a lot cleaner than it did just over a fortnight ago. Moreover, this radio in general looks a lot cleaner, both internally as well as externally, than it did almost a fortnight ago. Okay, I'll screw its back cover into place and we'll turn it around and see how close BBC Radio 4 is to 1500 on the dial. As you can see, making up a new board where its mains lead boot has been moved up 6mm has enabled me to avoid making an unsightly hole between the uh, two existing holes. Using the top hole has made for a neater job. Rightio chaps, you and I will see how close the dial cursor is on long wave to where BBC Radio 4 is to 1500 on the dial. 
I'll uh, switch on and wait for the valves to warm up. I uh, place the cursor directly over 1500. So we will see how well my tracking adjustment went. Shouldn't be too long now. And how they shape people's lives. On New Year's Eve, a miracle happens. Silas has lost his gold and finds something far more precious in its place. His fingers encountered soft, warm curls. In utter amazement, Ooh, Silas that. fell on his knees and bent his head low to examine the marvel. <laughs> it was a sleeping Barely a millimetre or so to the left. Fair feet, with soft yellow rings all over its head. The novel Not too bad given at this just point of its magical exchange on the verge of becoming the more like a fable or a folk tale. Yet it also never yes. fell short of its brilliantly achieved realism. With all I'd the say of the linen weaving and it the has worked out and well on this occasion. And now I will give a quick demonstration on the medium wave band. Over the next two years, visit Middle Island. By the ocean, sangria by the ocean, paella by the ocean. is that you were then missing a number of players for the final one. There's not so much on AM these days. Not like they used to be. Very little at this end of the dial. Yeah, not bad at all. Right, I shall declare this radio reconditioned. <laughs> Just over a couple of years ago, I was uh, discussing Philco radios with a good pal of mine, Brendan, who lives on the other side of the pond, down in uh, Detroit, Michigan. It was then I began to uh, develop the idea Echo was on similar level to uh, Philco USA. Most certainly Echo equipment is uh, as popular among uh, enthusiasts here in England as Philco equipment is popular in uh, North America. <laughs> this Echo AD75 being uh, a no frills radio of its time has had its demanding moments during its uh, reconditioning but it turned out quite well in the end at least it's uh, working and uh, it is fairly clean <laughs> i thank you for uh, viewing this series your time and interest is uh, always appreciated. If you haven't as yet subscribed to my uh, channel, now is a good time to do so. Until my uh, next upload, take care and uh, God bless. Bye-bye from uh, Phil.